Turkey Plains and RC here operating at 2.4 gigahertz and got my good old trusty sweet tea. Awesome. I love some good sweet tea. I don't know about you guys. I, I will not do unsweetened. I have to have sweetened tea. Um, maybe I'm a little more southern. I don't know. All right, so something I wanted to kind of talk about uh, today um, is just really kind of show you guys um, what all sorts of abuse the simple FT Simple Cub has been through. Um, uh, now, for, currently right now, I only have just the one maiden flight up. I do have some footage of some other other flight attempts um, that I'll show you about here. All right, now, um, well, I'm kind of working through the kinks here a little bit on the uh, FT Simple Cub, and the problems that I'm in, having are nothing to do with the actual design itself. It's just a matter of finding the right um, battery placement um, to, to make sure it balances out uh, good. It, seem, it seems to be that what's been happening is I've been getting it to balance almost level. I should be going for more nose down, uh, and I think I'm going to do some, just some slight modifications to sort of you know, get it to where it is more a little uh, nose down. So I've been kind of playing around with that. Um, but I wanted to show you guys, you know, all the various abuse this plane has gotten, and it actually still is not not in that bad of shape. Now, one thing I had to do, of course, um, was I had to replace the motor in the airplane. Um, just because all those uh, little crashes and incidents there, uh, it, it ended up um, bending the motor shaft on it, but um, I ran into some issues with trying to get the motor shaft off the uh, the screws, uh, the set screws to try to get the motor shaft out. Had basically, um, I, I couldn't get them out, more or less. So I just went ahead and decided I just got to order a different order a new motor for it, and then I'll try to toy with this one later. So, but anyways, let's go ahead and get to the point here and show you guys just all the damage the FT Simple Cub has went through, and uh, I think you'll be kind of surprised considering all the little. Um, uh, little uh, issues and crashes there that it's had and actually how how well it still decent or how it decently looks right now so let's get to it um, we'll go ahead and show you this here first of course this is the the power pod being rebuilt still doing a few last few last minute things to it um, but as you can see of course it's a brand new uh, uh, race star motor uh, I believe a thousand kV or eleven 1 hundred kV let me I'll provide a link down below for you guys can check it out so there's that. Of course, here's the ESC on the bottom. Um, uh, come to find out the previous plastic firewall that I had, all the vibrations and stuff did cause some cracks in it, so I had to replace the firewall with a new one. Uh, here, of course, here's the inside of the fire or the inside of the uh, the power pod. Um, I usually put the receiver right in through here. I have some servo extensions on the uh, uh, the rudder and the uh, elevator. That stretch to here um, to reach the receiver. <laughs> so I got to put the still got to put the receiver in there, and that's it for the power pod. Now, all right, here is the wing for the FT Simple Cub. Uh, as you can see from a, a main standpoint, it actually doesn't look too bad. Um, the big damage, of course, was on the wing tips. Um, you can see some crumpling right through there, um, and then I'll flip around over here to the other side. And this is probably the wing tip that got it the worst. You can see it's a little crumpled there. So, but that's really it for the wing. So let me go ahead and show you the fuselage now. Okay, here is the fuselage. Now, as you can see, for the most part, you know, like I said, doesn't really you can't see a whole lot. It did, of course, crumple um, this up here um, due to the uh, power pod getting you know, mashed in so many times, you know, some of these holes here for the, uh, for the power pod, of course, have gotten larger and I've had to make multiple ones. So, you know, that happens sometimes. Um, I did start doing reinforcements as well, um, on the inside of the fuselage for the power pod to help it from, from shifting so much. Uh, the big part here, of course, probably is the crumpled nose. Um, 
So I, I made this a little hatch here for to access for the battery. But as you can see, the the, the nose crumpling is a pretty pretty substantial. Uh, but at the same time, it doesn't you know I mean it it is pretty significant damage, but it doesn't really um, affect the flying characteristics any. So by all means, I go ahead and just keep using it even with a crumpled nose. Um, I will probably end up. Um, I haven't done anything to it yet, but I probably will go ahead and, you know, sort of glue this back up and try, try to fix it up a little bit. <clears throat> uh, something else I want to show you guys as well. Uh, on the first, or my first, uh, or, main, or the maiden flight there, uh, when it came down, the landing gear here, uh, you can kind of see actually what happened is it, um, you know, this all used to be just a, um, a single piece of foam board. Um, where the wire was actually, the wire for the landing gear was actually uh, inside. It was kind of sandwiched in there. And when it landed, it had popped the landing gear wire out. The landing gear was, of course, you know, fa you know, face back this way. And um, so the landing gear, you know, it kind of ruined the landing gear there. Um, what I had done is I thought I might fly that same day or was wanting to because the weather was so good that I ended up, um, I, I don't think I had access to hot glue at the time, so I had Gorilla Glue on me, and I just threw, you know, a few drops of that in there, and I, I was kind of looking at it more of just a temporary solution, but, you know, Gorilla Glue, it just expands like crazy, so um, you can probably kind of see it there, you know, like I said, I thought it might be a temporary solution, but uh, with the Gorilla Glue, um, it kind of really stiffened it up quite a bit so i don't think the landing gear is going anywhere now uh that's sort of the the update with the ft simple cub i'm one of those kind of people i would rather just fly an airframe until it just gives up and as you can see there's still some life in this one so but i, I wanted to kind of make this video or kind of show you guys um even in some pretty tough crashes um that it is still flyable um, you know, this stuff right here, like I said, it's really just a cosmetic thing. So I'm not too much worried about that. Um, and like I said, I'll just keep flying it until it officially comes apart. Or if I have a really bad crash or something like that. So <clears throat> uh, I think some people maybe have wondered about the durability of flight test airplanes. And I think this is kind of a good true uh, test to sort of what kind of abuse they can endure. Um you know, like I said, it just depends on the crash itself. Some crashes will just completely destroy one, and then some crashes are, you know, not a big deal. So, anyways, like I said, we got the new uh, motor. Um, like I said, power pod's been rebuilt, and um, so hopefully we'll get this guy back out again soon and get her up in the air uh, officially, um, so you guys can see how it does. All right, and that's all for me. I hope you guys have a good one, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.